Hey guys, Big D here. Welcome back to Horoscope. I've got yet another ranking for you. I'm going to rank the Jeepers Creepers trilogy from worst to best. And before we get started, I have a couple of real quick announcements. First off, if you've seen my pumpkin head ranking, you already know how I'm, you know, how I rank, how I'm going to rank most franchises. You know exactly what I'm going to be looking for. And you guys also know that these are just my opinions, guys. Okay? This is my list. It's not yours. It doesn't have to be yours. I do encourage you to post your ranking or your list down in the comment section below. Secondly, instead of doing the podcast, I thought about doing maybe like a little spin-off series of this one where I just kind of basically give you the body count of each horror movie I cover. So, and lastly... I am very much aware of the controversy surrounding the writer director Victor Salva. I'm not going to go into detail about that. This isn't the platform to discuss it. I'm not trying to get political or social. And I would appreciate it if you didn't bombard or overwhelm my comment section with arguments or discussions regarding it. Sound good? All right, let's hit the rankings. Number three, coming in at the bottom is Jeepers Creepers for you. This is pretty much easily the worst film in the, in the franchise. Let's go and get the negatives out of the way. Uh, the CGI sucks. It's awful. The acting. Well, okay. Sorry. The characters suck, I should say. The acting is kind of, oh, kind of so-so. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, um. The fact that the sheriff of, of Polo County somehow knew about the creeper, yet neglected to tell his entire police force about it. I'm sorry, but that's negligence, in my opinion. Let's see, you have some really stupid decisions. You also have... I'm sorry, the main focus of this entry in the series is to reveal or explore the creeper's origins or secrets. They don't do that. We're three movies in and we still know nothing about the creeper. But my biggest negative is this movie is just a giant commercial for another movie that we're probably never going to get. Now, there are a couple of redeeming qualities to this film. Now, the guy who plays the Creeper, he's awesome in all of these movies. He's pretty much the one and only good thing about all, all movies. You've also got a couple of returning characters in the form of the guy who played Sergeant Tubbs in the original, and Gina Phillips, who was in the original. She played Trish Jenner. She makes a little cameo. But other than that, guys, this, this is just a terrible entry to the series, guys. That's why I'm giving it one and a half skulls out of five. My lowest rating to date. Number two. Number two is Jeepers Creepers 2, the second one. So, as far as negatives go, they do use some CGI more than in the original, but it doesn't look as good as the first one. Now, this movie does have the same problem with Jeepers Creepers 3 in that the character, most of the characters suck. Um, there's a little logic issue in one scene, the creeper somehow manages to rip off, sorry, partly rip off the roof of the car, but he struggles with a, with a school bus for most of the runtime of the film. And uh, this, uh, one of the kids in the school bus somehow gets like visions or like a premonition, basically explained to her you know, everything we need to know about the creeper, which we've already known. If you've ever watched the first movie, then you would know it. Good things about the movie, uh, you get to see more of the Creeper, which is pretty cool. Um, the dad and son are actually pretty cool. You also get a really good opening sequence. I'll, I'll probably give, give this one maybe a three, three and a half schools out of five. As far as sequels goes, it's not bad. It's a lot better than part three. <laughs> my, but, the, but my number one, is the original, Jeepers Creepers. This is probably one of the, it's probably one of the greatest horror movies of the early 2000s. And regardless of how you feel about Victor Salva, Guy knew how to make a really good horror movie. 
you know, tons of iconic sequences. They do use a couple shots of CGI, but they don't rely on it. And the way that the kills are shot are very artistic. I really have only, I really don't have any negatives for this movie. As, maybe aside from the cool shots of CGI, which don't look great, but they don't look terrible either. I'm gonna give that one probably 4.9 schools out of five, guys. I highly recommend the first two, and you can just skip the third one. Just don't bother watching it. <laughs> anyway, join me next time when I will review Wish Upon. But until then, this has been Big Deal with Horsco. Stay safe.